Okay, we're going to take a look at uh, Blake uh, doing a block start here. And first of all, we'll look at it in real time. Uh, it's a little tough to see, and then we're going to go back and slow it down. But uh, take a look here. Looks like a pretty decent first three steps out, and then he, he gives it up, obviously. But let's go back and look at it in slow motion. We ought to be able to see a little bit more as he comes out there. Looks even better in slow-mo. Third step looked like he was a little flat-footed, maybe a little out in front of his hip. But now we're going to go in and let's analyze frame by frame and see if there's some stuff that we can pick out that he's doing right or if he's doing anything wrong. First of all, <coughs> take a look at his arms. Uh, his shoulder looks to be in a great position here, almost directly over his hand, just slightly outward possibly. Um, and so he's got a nice base there. You know, the further that he would lean out with that shoulder, let's say if he came out at an angle like, uh, you know, like this, the further that he gets out over those hands, the less weight he can put on the blocks uh, back here. So any lean that he puts out is going to take some, some pressure off those blocks. And we want to have those blocks loaded pretty well so that he can get a good push out of the blocks. Remember, we don't want to stumble out. We want to push off and push off with uh, power. So it's not so much quickness, it's more about uh, power. Second thing we want to look at probably are the angles of his uh, of his legs and the block, and we'll see if this angle tool will help us out a little bit here. So we go up here to there, and then we're going to come back through his hip, and it looks like he is probably at about 95 degrees. 90 uh, is, the, is commonly believed to be the optimum, so See, how can we decrease that angle? I think what I would do to decrease that angle just a little bit is to go ahead and um, move his uh, foot, front foot up one inch, probably one inch up with that front foot, and that would decrease the angle a little bit and give him a little uh, more spacing between his blocks there. It would also bring that foot, this foot here, under more under his hip area, which is something that uh, we might want in that case. So anyway, not bad though on that front leg. He's very close. Let's look at the back leg and see where he is on the back leg. If we go here and then we're going to come back up through the hip and it looks like his back leg is kind of there at that angle, 122 degrees. And we're talking about being a, a hundred and uh, 120, between 120 and 130, so he's he's very good there with his back leg. He's okay. Um, all right, so angles are looking pretty good. The one thing that I might say about his head is that we want, it looks like the back of his head is up a little bit, so what I would have him do with um, with his head at this point is I would have him just drop it down a little bit so that it's not at this angle. You see this angle coming outward so that it's more in the angle with his back, you know, coming down that way. So I'd have him drop his head just a little bit. Um, okay, it looks like his feet are placed well in the blocks. Um, if you look at them, we can make them bigger, I think, I hope. Uh, if we look at that, um, yeah, he's, he's just fine there. Notice that we don't have a lot of space between the back foot and the back block when he's in the set position, he's still going to be able to get that stretch reflex out of that back foot. And I think as we watch it, we'll see. Uh, and that's something we want. We want to make sure that that back block is loaded up and uh, he's ready to push out with both feet. So let's, why don't we go ahead and let's just see if he does push with that back foot. So here's what we're going to watch. Uh, let's watch, uh, let's see if I can come in here, you know, right about there. Let's watch that back foot and see if it when when he goes let's see if actually he gets some push out of that okay so here we go gun goes off pop and it goes back and he's out okay i'm going to rewind that a little bit put it back in frame by frame gun goes off he gets a nice push a nice little stretch reflex and zoom he's out of there with that back foot so he gets the slingshot effect there from that back foot which is uh which is great let's go back down now and watch him come out and see what his angles are as he comes out of the blocks as he leaves we're going to go all the way to well first of all you want to be low with that back foot coming out of the back block you don't want to bring uh kids always confuse 
you know, acceleration mechanics with, you know, peak speed mechanics. And we do so much to pattern heel under butt that a lot of times kids will bring that heel up high as they come through. I think what you have to do is keep that foot low, make sure that the kids understand that that foot has to be low. And maybe the cue would be to drive out with the knee. Just drive that knee forward so that we get a fairly low release on that back foot coming out. So we can see that his back foot never gets higher than his opposite knee. He's coming across in this direction with that. And it's not up in this area at all. Um, okay, so he's coming out. Good push off both blocks. Let's see where he ends up here. Okay, there's clearance. He's in block clearance there. And let's look at his angle now. If we get in here and use the angle tool, and we're going to go right through his ankle, up through his hip, up through where his shoulder should be there. And uh, really, we don't want to tell our kids to be low. Um, we want to tell them to just push hard and come out of the blocks hard. So if we look at his angle coming out, he is pretty much at about a 35 degree angle. Now that's a nice low angle um, that uh, not all kids can achieve. And the reason that he achieves such a low angle is because he is able to push harder on the blocks, he's able to accelerate himself faster, and able to come out at a lower angle without stumbling. Um, now, let's see if he came out too low. The true test here is looking at his front foot. Um, so if we're going to look at his front foot, which is getting ready to land here, the front foot area, um, let's see if that foot uh, is going to be able to get a little bit of little bit of uh, negative velocity, a little bit of coming back into the track. We don't want this foreleg uh, here to extend at all. So what we have is we have this angle coming down here. That's a good angle. We want to keep that and we want to be able to drive that leg down into the track back in this direction, right, down into the track uh, in good acceleration mechanics. So let's see what happens as we go through here. And he does that. He gets some negative foot speed. He's coming backward into the track. Notice that as his foot touches, his hip here is ahead of his foot. And that's what we want. We want the hip to be ahead of the foot so you get that nice uh, push through and you're not actually pulling your center of mass over the foot, you're pushing off and it feels like a nice easy push down on a bicycle pedal rather than having to pull yourself over that. So he looks good there coming through. Now his second step, again, we want the foot to be low. We don't want it up under the butt. If you look at his foot here, you can see that it's not coming up under his butt. It's low and he's going to swing that through and keep that low and Again, come through, looks good, nice extension there. Let's see what his angle is here, just for the heck of it. Uh, if we go into our angle tool and we hit his here and we come right through the hip and right through the shoulder, I would say he's there. Come across on the bottom and line that up maybe to there. He's at 42 degrees right now on his second step, and that's fine. That's a, a perfect place to be for him. We want to make sure now that that lead foot, as it comes down, is coming down at this angle. We don't want it to extend out and come down, you know, way, way out in front of his hip. So let's see what happens there as we progress, and it does. We can see that it comes straight back, his hip, his hip is uh, is well in front. Okay, so here we have his hip. Here we have, you know, if we came straight down, he's here. His hip is well in front of his foot, and that gives him a good power position to be able to push off uh, and and get through that. So he comes off well there. Let's see if I can move over a little bit with this, and uh, it doesn't look like I can, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, and then as we go here. One last time, let's go back and see his extension here. Let's check his angle one more time and see where he is on as he begins step number three. He's here. We're going to come through his hip, up through his shoulder. Look there, and then let's come across as we go low here. And we're looking at, really, at 
around 40 degrees at that point if if we're going through perfectly there. So he's still in a nice acceleration mode, okay? He's still got a good angle. He's not coming up too early. And really, we're just working on those first three steps uh, anyway at this point. So then the foot will come down. Now, he might have overstepped that one a little bit. And let's just take one last look and see. His outside hip is probably about right there. So if we came straight down. No, you know, he looks like he's... That's uh, a little out front, but... He looks like he might be doing okay there. Yeah, I guess he is doing okay there. Um, to get, again, a nice push off that. Um, so Blake looks like he does a great job coming out there. Um, other things we want to watch for and uh, corrections we might want to be able to make here is we want to look at the lead arm, uh, this area here. So... His, his lead arm, you know, is going to be uh, opposite his, uh, his quick leg. And that's going to, one of the clues or the cues that you give uh, a kid who's starting is going to be you want to throw that lead arm. Usually there's a lag there, you know, a little lag time to catch up. And let's see what Blake does with his, his lead arm uh, as he starts. Okay, he's off. Now look, both arms are coming back. Then that arm is stalling out. And now he's throwing it just a little bit late. Um, if you look at his position here, as he has block clearance, he's fine with that lead arm. It just started probably a little late. And his back arm, great power swinging that arm back, which is, uh, you know, obviously going to give him a better push off that front block. Uh, you know, that backward momentum on the front arm helps with the uh, force that's put into that front block. So, uh, again, one thing that he could work on probably is not delaying that lead arm so much. So as the gun goes off, we can see that this arm has gone backwards. Uh, we really don't want it to go too far in that direction. We want it to stall for a little while. But I think that Blake, in his case, uh, could leave it where it was to begin with and then catch up to it later. So now he's finally coming forward with that arm, and he is actually going to come very forcefully out front with that arm. Uh, okay, well, that's a, a little bit of an analysis uh, about what he does. One of the things that you, know, that you might want to teach uh, your kids as they're starting, um, one of the big things is to load up both blocks as they come to the set position. They need to have... They really do need to have pressure on both blocks. And where kids uh, really fall down is they don't load up the back block. So one of the things that I tell my athletes is when you raise your hips to the set position, as your hips are coming up into the set position here, raise them not by pushing with the front foot, not by pushing with the power leg. You know, you, you don't want to use this exclusively to raise your hips. What you would rather do, maybe, to be able to load that back block and get the feel for it is come on up and try raising your hips with that back foot. And um, kids will get the feel of being able to load up that back block so that it's easy to push with both feet. And they're simply not stepping out with that back foot. So, again, what most athletes will do, at least on the high school level, is they will just step out with that foot and push hard on the, you know, on the front leg, on the power leg. Well, what we want to do is push backwards with both feet. Uh, again, you know, that was something that we were talking about uh, earlier. And you can see the Blake does that. Push backwards with both, incorporate that stretch reflex on the back leg, and it will slingshot itself out. So again, there's a little analysis of a, of a start, pretty good start by, by, by Blake uh, Selig.